Hi. Thanks for coming on the Out of the Album podcast. Nice to be here. Um, and so we are going to talk today about the Abba Cab cover that you did for Genesis in 1981. Yeah. Um, but before we get into this cover particularly, I'd like to just go back to what led you up to it, so starting with maybe how you got into the music business as a creative. Okay. Um, well, I go back a very long way, um, and the, the, the reason I, uh, first of all, the reason I became um, a designer goes back to when I was at school, and I loved art classes, but I wasn't really that good at it. Um, but I had a really, really good art teacher, Mr. Grant, I can still remember his name, wow. uh, all those years ago, who sort of saw, saw something creative in me and just kept pushing me and pushing me until he sort of said, right, I think what you should do is try and see if you can go to art college. Was that something that wasn't in your family as such then? No, not at all. Right. No, 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 no. Um, I, um, no, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's just something that I sort of I found within myself. Yeah. So uh, I managed to go to Art College um, and uh, ended up at the London College of Printing, which is now part of UAL. Uh, uh, and um, did two years there, but left in the at the at the end of the um, at the end of the second year to go and work for um, a design company that I've actually had a placement with. Um, during the holidays, and I just felt I've, got, I've gained so much more from actually doing things and being in the real world yeah. that I did, didn't think I needed to go back and finish my degree. So I never finished my degree. Um, and so from there, I sort of um, um, went to a book publishers, and then after that, I ended up as art director of Polydor Records. That book publishing into record company seems to be quite a a trod, well trodden path. Well, I was, I was, I was out with books, and I was in charge of all the covers yeah. and the um, and, and the inner and, and the inner sleeves sort of thing. Um, so it was very much, and so I was working with photog- a lot of photographers, a lot of illustrators, and art directing them. And the funny enough, um, one of the artists I worked with, a guy called Brian Grimwood, who is a very, very good, very quite famous uh, illustrator. Um, and he did a couple of covers for me um, about Octopus Books and then said to me, um, I heard that I hear there's a, a, a job going at Polydor Records for, a, for a, a, the art director of um, album covers. So why don't you go for it? Why don't you go for it? So I did. Mm-hmm. And but I got the job, which was amazing. So, that, so he sort of led me into that. But the reason I, th- that, was my, that was my end goal anyway. Yeah. Because by, when I was 15, I sort of obviously discovered music, but mostly discovered that I liked looking at the album cover, um, looking at the inner bags, reading the lyrics. Yeah. Um, and way back then, which is sort of, you know, sort of mid, mid-60s, um, record stores used to have um, listening booths. So you would go and say, well, can I listen? I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about buying you know, a uh, Neil Young album, um, can I can I listen to it? So you would be able to go and listen to it. And while I was listening to it, I'd be looking at the cover. And um, in 1965, I sort of, um, I, I, not, I didn't discover the Beatles, obviously, because somebody else discovered the Beatles, but I discovered I really liked the Beatles. And my favorite album at the time was Revolver. Right. Which was A, a brilliant album. Mm-hmm. Um, with one of the best Beatles tracks on it, which is For No One, which is incredible. And I fell in love with someone that summer, and that was the song that <laughs> sort of led me. And so the whole thing sort of led, and I thought, right, I love, if I could, I said, I'm, not, I'm never, never, never going to be a musician. I'm not clever enough, I haven't got enough melody, I haven't got enough tempo or anything like that. But maybe, if I could do an album cover for someone, that would be a really nice thing to be in, in, in the music industry. So from that time on, that's what led 
me to being, you know, ending up at Polydor Records. So I sort of, you know, to, and so since 19, since, since I was 15, I've sort of been doing the thing I love doing, getting paid for it and having a pretty amazing sort of, you know, yeah. life and career working in the music industry. So, you know, it's a sort of, it was my dream job and I ended up doing it. Yeah, so, you thought you had the vision and you, and you, yeah, you made it happen. Yeah, so, so I ended up at Polydor Records um, and uh, as art director. And of course, for the first year, um, I was doing any number of different genres of music, obviously, which, which Polydor you know, were putting out. So I worked with The Who, I worked with Peggy Lee, I did a big Crosby Christmas album, um, Rory Gallagher, um, and so a, a complete huge sort of range of different uh, styles of both music and obviously design for those. But very much, because it was Polydor Records, very much a commercial design. And that, again, that's the sort of basis of my whole career as well, is I'm a commercial designer. And my job is to, um, is to package a product and so I try and, yeah, that's what, how I sort of see it. But of course, I, what I want to try and, instead of it's like shampoo or soap suds or something, it's actually a vinyl, it was a vinyl record. It's never more, sadly, or is again. But um, so I, I, it's a sort of, it, it's, a, it's an abstract product. So you, you've got to, you've got to sort of show yeah. someone, give someone an idea of what that abstract product is. Yeah. So, so my intention has always been with the cover is to try and get across a feeling of either what the music's about, what the band are about, um, and, and to try and do that in, in, in the simplest and easiest way possible so that everybody can understand it. Yeah. So, that, it, it, you know, that, that's always been my, you know, the way I've worked and the way people who worked for me in my studio worked you know, because I'm, I'm directing them and, you know, the idea is it's, you know, let's, let's have a simple idea and let's see if it can work and how we can make it work. And if it's a complicated idea, let's try and simplify it down so that it can be understood. Um, and now, of course, there are designers that do very, very complicated things with very, very sort of, you know, with lots and lots of meaning and message and stuff. I mean, I, you know, you can go back to, you know, the, the, the Pink Floyd sleeves, Storm Thorgerson's work, and um, very surreal, you know, very, very clever, very funny, very original. Um, and, you know, I'm not clever enough to do that sort of thing. So I sort of try and sort of come up with what I, what I think are sort of quite sort of simple ideas and simple ways of telling a story, but still hopefully getting across the story. But well, that sort of touches on a distinction that I perhaps make between a studio like hypnosis and yours which is that um, we were just talking earlier about uh, Barney Bubbles and his work, and that there's a, there's a, a similarity in, between you and him, in that you are sort of working with the music that you're packaging. Um, yeah. In, quite deeply, so you're not it's interesting what you said about packaging so that designing for something that is an abstract mm -hmm. because you are not looking through and seeing oh this is your house style there are sort of two kinds of album cover design or yes you get a certain level of quality and some similarities sort of cropping up but there's not a house style that is just this will work for anyone you're definitely focused in on who that yeah. musician is and what the brief is in this case and yeah. there's a huge variety of stuff that we can see in your cover stories book. Yeah. And um, it's fairly early days when we're doing when you're doing covers for Abacab, but you'd worked for Genesis before. Yes, I um, I, I started I, I did a um, Duke album cover for Genesis, which was the first. Um, they did a, an album called Their Number Three, which was basically when when um, uh, well, Peter Gabriel left, um, and um, they um, made Phil Collins said he would do the singing as well as playing the drums. So that, um, 
then number three was was a big a big album for him was was probably the this took a change from the sort of the very sort of prog yeah. aggressive sort of you know land lies down and nervous yeah. crime and all that sort of thing so then number three was a much more sort of if you'd like poppy um well yeah pop yeah. a slightly more popular album um so um that that was quite successful. So then they came up with the, they wanted to do the next album, which working with Genesis was was quite different because everybody you work with is different. So for instance, you know I worked with Kate Bush. Well, Kate Bush was the ultimate sort of artist in terms of knowing how she wanted to sound, how to make her sound like she wanted to sound, how making yeah, how she wanted to look how she wanted to perform. Yeah. Um, she was completely in control of all those aspects of herself as an artist, yeah. including the way she wanted to be photographed and the way she wanted to be seen, you know, on a record cover. Yeah. Um, Genesis were almost the complete opposite to that, um, which I found out quite quickly working with them. Um, one of the things I really, really, um, absolutely passionate about is is listening to the music right as soon as I can if yeah. someone says you know what is an album cover I'll say great what, what, what where are you when can when, what is there some music to listen to it because that's the starting point that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to package as yeah. I say. so it's and also meeting the band and I love going to the studio um, you know either whether whether rehearsing or or, or demoing, or actually recording, because you know you're you're in it. Do you know? What I mean? it, it, you it, I like to surround myself with what I'm trying. You know, with what I'm doing. So um, they said, you know, I was I was um, approached. You know, to to do the cover by the record company, and they said, you know, you should go and meet the band. So I went to meet the band, um, and we talked about we. They were, they were obviously recording Duke, but they said, we haven't really got an idea. We haven't got a title for the album. We don't normally give titles to our tracks until very, very late on. Sometimes, you know, the, the lyrics are written much, much later after we <laughs> record the music. So we haven't really got an idea. Okay, fine. Uh, we don't want to be on the cover, so that's fine. Um, go away and come up with some things. So what I did was I, I, I sort of, I thought, well, it'd be quite nice to do an illustrative, maybe do something illustrative. So I, I got a few um, illustrators' portfolios um, and a couple of photography portfolios to sort of look at abstract images and that sort of thing. Went down to meet the band again. Um, we trawled through a few and we sort of narrowed it down to two or three different illustrators that they liked. Um, and one of the illustrators was a guy called Lionel Koshlin, who was a French, French illustrator. Um, and they said, yeah, we, we quite like it. Let, let's, let's see what he can do. And I said, OK, have you still nothing, still nothing coming on yet with regard to um, uh, any titles or anything like that. And I think Phil might, might have said, um, we're working on this track at the moment. I mean, it's possibly going to be called Duke. Possibly. So I thought, well, at least that's something. So um, I, went to, I went to Paris, um, had a meeting with Lionel, who was lovely, really lovely French, you know, illustrator, very, very good, very, um, very, very idiosyncratic in his, in his, and very, star, very stylized, but really, really liked it. He showed me loads and loads of stuff. Um, and of course, was generous enough to say, oh, they said, look, you like this book, you know, he kept giving me things, which was really nice. And one of the things he had was um, th this alphabet book. And it was, it was a character called Albert, and he did him in different sort of guises through this, through this alphabet book. And one of them was the, virtually the front cover of the Duke in the end, oh. which was, he was called Duke, and he was looking out of this window. Yeah. And um, I thought that was amazing. So I, I took everything back to Genesis again and said, right, look, I think 
this is the guy, he's definitely the right guy. And I said, I think this is, this I think will work brilliantly if we're gonna call him Duke. Well, we're not sure it's gonna be Duke now. And I said, well, look, look at this and see what you think. Because I'd, I'd, I'd sort of mocked it up. Pretty much as, pretty much as, the, um, as the album turned out. Um, with obviously the word, you know, the, the name Duke at the top. Um, and um, they loved it. So you know, the, the, the Duke, the Duke album ended up being okay. They liked, they really liked it, and it did really, 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 really well. Um, so the next one came up was um, a, 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 a year or so later was um, for the album for Abacab. Again, um, I went down to to uh, to see the guys. They said, listen to some of the music, listen to the music, and then they said, I said, right, title, uh, any ideas? No, we've got no ideas whatsoever. Um, I said, okay, it's, um, what, what do you want me to do? Do you want to go along the same route as we did with, um, with Duke and I'll get some um, illustrators, portfolios, really have a look at them, um, and then when I bring them back, maybe we might, you might be a bit further along with some of the recording. So I said, yeah, fine. So again, true, true, you know, trying to make life as easy as possible for myself. Right, okay, I'll find some new illustrators, take a few down, show them the ones I really like and see what happens. Um, took, went down to the next time, um, listened to a bit more music. Um, and they said, I said, any, yeah, any titles or anything yet? And they said, no, no. Um, the only thing we've got is this chord sequence, which is A, B, C, A, 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 So A, B, A, C, A, B. Uh, that's all we've got. Uh, oh, okay, fine. So we looked through, they looked, I took all the, the portfolios into the, into the studio. They looked through them all. I could see that there was nothing. They didn't like anything. Um, and they just kept looking at each other and there's nothing here that really says anything through to us. Um, one, 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 of the, one or two of them were looking at the portfolios. Um, I think Mike Rutherford picked up my um, little sketch, well, I laughingly called it a sketchbook, which was just sort of like a little black um, uh, moleskin book with torn out pictures, things that sort of, you know, I thought, well, oh, that's giving me an idea for something or other. And um, it was quite full of drawings and some torn out photos and some, some things that, you know, just, oh, that might give me something to work on for the next cover of someone. Anyway, in there, um, Mike lifted up the book and went, Eureka, I found the next cover. What? What you found in there? Um, show, didn't show it to me, showed it to uh, Phil and um, Tony. And they all looked like, yeah, that's it, brilliant. <laughs> so I said, let me see what it is then. So they turned it round and literally it was a, um, I, I torn out some, you used to get a, a, a Pantone swatch book, mm -hmm. which was a book full of tiny little postage stamp size um, cover reference, references. And I'd just torn out a um, few little scraps and stuck them down and then put a bit of black ink over the top of them. Um, and it, it was that size. Really? And he said, and they said, yeah, this is the cover. And I went, this is the cover? <laughs> Then, yeah, yeah, come go on, off you go, go on, sort it up. Um, and uh, I said, okay, all right, great, that's, that's simple. Uh, and, and he said, yeah, let's call it Abacad. So I went, to, <laughs> so of course then I had to go to, um, to see the manager and tell him the exciting news that they'd chosen this ridiculous tiny little image that I then was going to make into an album cover and it, laughingly at the time, I said, I suppose you want to be paid for this. So I said, yes, of course I <laughs> uh, And then of course, so he was fine, that's fine, okay. So then I, I mocked it up, but I mocked it up in four different colourways. So I had, to, I had the, the original one, which is the one that, 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 that um, ended up being the one that went throughout the whole of the, the life of the album. Which is the yellow pink. Which is the, which is the um, yellow, it's... Um, it's you have to show us as you've got the prints right there. Yeah. So it's that one. Yeah. So that was that was the original. Uh, that's and those are the exact colours that I I used. So I went to the, I went to the record company and said, "This is the cover. 
you know, um, and they again laughingly said, you know, what do you think this is? A, I said, this is what the band will this day love it. <coughs> and of course, they had quite a good reputation by then. They yeah. sold lots of records. So as far as the the, the the band were concerned, what they said went. If t if their manager said that's what's going, then the record company really had to just go along with it. So um, and and, they, and I said, by the way. Genesis are paying me for the artwork, so you don't have to worry about it. You know, don't worry. You know, so I, I won't tell you how much it is because this is, you know, and it was inch for inch the best paid, <laughs> best paid album cover I ever did. So the simplest and easiest and the best money maker I ever had. Um, and um, I said, to, but I said to the record company, why don't we do four different colorways for the initial release? Um, and they agreed to that, and not only did they agree to that, but they agreed to having beautiful white, proper white card, and also to be bossy. So the the the, the cut, so it was like a relief, and I wanted to have that sort of feeling that it was actually stuck on paper. So the embossing sort of gave it that sort of three dimensional look, yeah. which um, which really worked really really well. So the the, the the initial the initial release came out on four different. Fine covers, and by all accounts, that everybody bought at least one or two. Uh, some people bought all four, believe it or not. Um, so they all sold out. The, the first test, the, the first pressings all sold out in vinyl, um, and then they then they went back to just the one colour version, which is the again, which is the original one with the with the blue and yellow, which is actually, believe it or not, quite Ukrainian sort of flag yeah, colours. It is. Uh, I was well up, I was obviously so well ahead of the game there. Um, but so you really, like, you really shifted units for them with that department. Really shifted units. It was a, it was a gold, gold selling record in um, in the UK, yeah. and um, did really, really well. So, um, and also, as I said, I got really, really well paid for it. And not only that, the band agreed to let me have the the copyright. So I own yeah. I own the image. So. You know that to, to me that was sort of, if you like, the epitome of my greatest album because it's the simplest solution and the simplest idea, but I think you get hopefully you get everything you need to know about um, what's inside that what's inside that package really. Yeah, it's it's pure yeah. simplicity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's sort of some, that's some, that's some, if you like that sums up Bill Smith's studio. And and you know a couple of the other you know obviously yeah. some of the other sleeves I've done as well. I much it was just my whole career was built on uh, one album cover. But um, it's one of your, your it, it's one it's one of my favourites and it's one of yeah. the, obviously the ones that that, that that did particularly well. Yeah. Um, I did I ended up doing another couple of albums for um, for Genesis. And uh, one of which was um, my young son, sort of when he was sort of two or two and a half. And um, you know, had sort of these things called shape sorters, which was sort of like a round um, uh, ball that you put sort of different stars, shit, yeah. different stars and square shapes in. Everybody, yeah. everybody. If you've got a child, you've got one of these. Anyway, he'd, he'd gone to bed and left left them scattered on the floor. So I took a Polaroid, uh, another quick cheap. Um, thing to do, we took a polar order of, of, of the shape sorters and sold that to to Genesis as, uh, as 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 their album cover, which again they really really liked. So again, another simple <laughs> simple, simple idea that um, again you know a, a, a lot of people really liked. Simple, but you have, you have to have the experience to have the confidence to see that through. Yeah, yeah. or have the band losing through your notebook. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So let's have a look, we've done um, these editions that we've just signed off the briefs for. Yeah. And um, we decided to do the four colours. Can you say they're there or not? Yeah, I think you can. Yep. And so it's nice to be talking about this cover on the day that we're, oh, that we approved the briefs. Yeah. Yeah. It's all fresh and all right, gorgeous. They look really nice. Yeah. Really, you know. Pleased with the colours, really love, you know, still, it still says something, even though it doesn't say Genesis around the cab anymore, it still says something. And I think if you, you know, 
if you, if you like Genesis and um, like that album, yeah. it might be quite nice. To, and, and again, that's where I sort of keep going back to the reason we're doing Cover Stories, the book, was that it's a sort of companion to listening to music. You know, if you're listening, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're lucky enough to, um, you know, be listening to a Genesis album and you could read the story of how I made the cover, it sort of, again, sums up where I started and why I did, you know, yeah. did what so I did. So back to, to that. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, do, do we, we made the decision to take the name and the title out of it because you see almost this, the, that original sketch plus no, your... Exactly. That, yeah, that's exactly how it was. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it didn't have Genesis or Abacan yeah. by it. So that's what they saw and yeah. that's what they liked. So, you know, it's quite nice to go back to that as the, as the original idea. Well, it's super exciting to be doing it with you and thank yeah. you for telling us all about it. Cool. Okay.